Amen. Well, good morning. Ooh, what a great day. Isn't that awesome? Just already with the, the baptisms, the child dedications. Uh, like I said, this just seeing um, the Abilene Church growing and thriving and just uh, being all that God has fashioned. And uh, there's much more to come, no doubt. And, uh, and thank God for the facilities. You know, the facilities... They're, they're not the church. We're the church, right? And, uh, but it is really nice to have facilities to be able to, to just do life together and, and uh, for us to gather as a church. And what a blessing. And uh, we're continuing to uh, um, develop this facility and do some renovations and things. And so um, there's a lot of excitement building. Some have been peeking over into the gymnasium and seeing... Uh, some of the remodel, and, and uh, I got to sneak over this morning and, and look myself, and, and uh, those new basketball goals hanging in there, and the gym floor is going to be laid before long, and of course, there's the volleyball for those that, that'll enjoy that, and um, it's, just, it's just awesome, you know, for, um, to be able to have, these are tools to be able to reach community, and um, and, you know, with, with the youth, we really need good tools to be able to do that. And so, and, and as you know, you know, with, with me, just uh, part of my calling is also with, with uh, charter school and just education and, and being involved in that and making a difference in kids' lives. And so that's a, that's a big part of who we are, you know, as the Life Church. And so we're very grateful for what God has really blessed us with. We, I hope that you'll, you'll embrace that and be thankful as well. And uh, for those of you that may be here just celebrating with some of these, these uh, families, that, uh, that you'll just um, be open to whatever God has for you this morning. Amen? I'm excited in this, in this series that we're in. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a freedom message. And freedom means different things to different people. But, um, you know, I stopped on the way, you know, uh, uh, at a restroom and, and right there on the bathroom, you know, it had a, had a sticker on the, on the mirror there above the lavatory of, um, are you safe? And just that question, you know, of, and, it, and of course it's, it's about being able to um, intervene, you know, in some of the, uh, child trafficking and some of the things that's going on in our day. We know that that movie came out, you know, on freedom. And if, if you haven't watched that, wow, what a powerful movie that is. And um, we're, we're just really in a time where um, there is a need for freedom. When we think about, you know, the, 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 even the founding, and I know it's, it's ugly in a lot of ways, you know, for America, and, and typically that, that is, you know, if you go back in history, you know, not, there's, there's no perfect country anywhere. I've, I've been, goodness, about 30 nations, and so you won't find that. It's just all of them have some uglies in their background and their history and all those things. But uh, somehow trying to find what is God doing in the midst of it, right? And, um, and so we have to embrace that, you know, right now. Uh, we're seeing that with, with um, just e even within our own country and, and really praying over that. And we can have, you know, lots of maybe different opinions politically and some different things. And, and uh, yet as the church, ultimately we're about people. And so um, it doesn't matter what nation they're even coming across that border from, we have a different kind of responsibility as the church in being able to reach people. And so I'm always looking for that opportunity. And, uh, and so um, many are trying to get here for freedom. I know that there's some, some uh, you know, jumping ahead of the line and all those different kinds of conversations. And, and there's some bad actors that are being caught and, and, at the border. And we know that some others are probably here in this country. And we have concerns when, you know, when law enforcement, top level FBI, when, when they're saying that there are people, bad actors here. And so we understand that. And uh, so we've, we've got uh, uh, to do things to really uh, fight for uh, our freedoms 
But in the midst of that, think about those that truly want to be a part of this nation. Um, and a lot of the places where I've traveled around the world, uh, they desperately would love to be here in America because it represents something, and that is freedom. And um, so many of them just don't have that. And um, it's... it's um, um, don't, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Thank God that you are here. Um, I, I've been places in the, in the world, even here in the Western Hemisphere, you know, the poorest country, you know, in Haiti. I was there right before COVID. And um, I actually had my wife, my daughter, and my administrator that, that uh, and we, we honestly got out um, um, it, it was very dangerous. I'll just put it that way. You know, when people, when there's guys surrounding your vehicle with big old rocks about that big, gonna stone you, uh, you're, you're, you're thankful you, you get back to America, right? <laughs> and, uh, but the dysfunction of the whole country and just the, the, the mess that it is. And so um, I, I guess from a global perspective, you begin to understand, okay, what does freedom really look like? What does freedom mean? What is, and, and ultimately we want freedom. Well, it really should take us back to the Word of God. And from a biblical worldview, we know that ultimate freedom comes in Christ. Right? It's, it's knowing Jesus who is freedom. He is freedom. That we would know the truth and we know that, that in that knowing, it's about a personal embrace. It's not mental assent. It's truly about heartfelt knowing and knowing Him. So, um, so I say all that to kind of tee up this message and uh, sometimes when we think about freedom, we, we, we're just thinking about certain types of things. Um, we, we think about, you know, the, 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 uh, the evil, the, the, the sinful person that's out there. And we're going to look at a passage of Scripture, and, and, uh, and, and I'm going to throw a spin on it today. And hopefully uh, those of you that are uh, like, like doing a little bit deeper dive are going to be stirred up to have to go study your Bible a little bit. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to get into some of that today. And uh, let's pray as we start. Again, Miss Joanne, she sends her love. She really, she had planned on coming. And uh, they had a real busy um, week. You know, she has Nana duty during the week. And she runs some business stuff. And then um, on uh, Saturday, had the women's event. And then my niece had her baby shower all afternoon that she was a part of and doing that. And, and so... Uh, and, and she's, she's actually, uh, doing distant learning, working on her, uh, theological degree and, uh, she's got a six page paper due. So she's like, please tell them, forgive me. I can, you know, she's got to crank out that paper. So anyway, those of you that are in education, understand that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for our time together and just, uh, your blessing here, um, upon us as, as we just approach your word. And, Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord. We embrace that today. We open our hearts to receive from you. Cause me to speak as an oracle, oracle of God uh, with uh, representing you and your heart of compassion and love. And, and uh, Father, that your word will be sent forth. It will accomplish whereunto it's sent today. And, uh, Lord, we give you permission. Have your way in us. Speak to us. Let's, let this be... Uh, relevant to each one of us in our personal lives, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone said, "Amen." You know, this um, whenever I was thinking about this series, and we had laid this out, and we're moving toward this, uh, and and I and I preached a Easter message uh, there in San Angelo. My takeoff scripture was here. The text for that day was Luke twenty four forty six and forty seven. It says, then, then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name that repentance and remission of sins. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, and you're going to, I'll talk some more about repentance and some of what that, what that means, but, but 
when I landed, as I was studying this, and I landed here on, um, on remission, the remission of sins. In re- the remission of sins, we, we see that, that this, this word, so many times in, in all of our English translations, is translated forgiveness. In, in a lot of those translations. And so when we, when we look at it at face value and we just think about just being forgiven, well, I don't know about you, I, I thank God for forgiveness, but I thank God that he didn't just forgive me. I'm going someplace. I mean, no, you can, you can be forgiven and still be in bondage. This word, if you go to the Greek, into the original word that, that is used here, it is way beyond just forgiveness. It is to release people from captivity, from the bondage, from enslavement. It's to free people. And this is the message that Jesus wanted. That's why I, I thank God for the cross. I thank God for the shedding of the blood. I thank God for, for all that was accomplished and done. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world once and all, once, once and for all. Not having to, to, I don't know about you, I'm glad I didn't have to drag a sheep in here this morning. <laughs> or a dove or something, something else to offer, you know, to God. That was satisfied. It was done through Jesus' life. But it didn't stop there. He went through that process of, of going into the grave. And, and, uh, and if you look at on the other side of that, of what happened, of freeing those that were captive in, in uh, Abraham's bosom, paradise, those things, and then leading captivity captive and, and, and setting them free and bringing them over on to the other side. And now we have a better picture of what heaven is like in that picture, but then he is resurrected from the dead with resurrection, life, and power so that now his spirit doesn't just come upon us. His spirit now comes to a, make its, make its, its a, a abode within us and so that now there is a power that can overcome a life of sin. Now, Sin, we, we understand that, that, that sin, sin is to miss the mark, and pretty much that's going to happen. <laughs> I, I know that, that uh, some of us want to believe that, that uh, somehow we've, we, we've never going to sin again. Y'all are quiet in here. Come on. But how many of you, you know, because again, you think about the word, that word sin, it was used, it was an archer archery term for meaning that you know when they when they would they would fire and they would practice and so that target target was was down you know down line there and they would have a person down there and he would he would cry out whether they're hitting the target or whether they're missing the target and if they miss the target basically in English terms he would cry out sin you missed the mark you missed the target. Come on, how many of us probably maybe on the way missed the mark? Surely nobody said something negative or got upset with a spouse. Just look up here. Don't, don't look. <laughs> Trying to spare the guilty. <laughs> and so the reality is, as much as we don't want to, and Paul talks about that, but he gets over into how we can walk in some of that freedom and what that happens. But the ultimate thing that I have found that, that true freedom has to come is, is about going deeper. And so the Bible talks about iniquity within talks about transgression and how that how that that comes and I don't know about you have you found yourself ever in a situation where where there was there was things that were going on that were uh, very um, habitual repetitive you 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 just found yourself truly in a in a place of bondage and with some vice something that that was felt overpowering to you 
Well, so many times, those things that are deeper within, that's ultimately what God is after. And that's why, you know, uh, you, you'll hear me say this a lot, that, that um, I, I think because maybe I was raised in some of this, you know, growing up, it was all about behavior modification. God's, God's not looking for behavior modification. He's looking for inward transformation. And that's a work of the heart that he has to do, right? And so being able to move through that process. And so ultimately, God's wanting us, the gospel, the message of, of, of repentance and remission of sin is about helping people find true freedom. And so I want to talk to us about set free. I want to look at a passage of Scripture here in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. And most of us know this because it's been titled, you know, as the prodigal son and the story of the prodigal son. And so we have um, many times these images of what that would look like as a prodigal son. And we even, even I have preached this story and have related it to this son that went completely off the rail and went into a lifestyle of sin and, uh, and, and just really jacked his life up in prostitutes and all this crazy living and lifestyle, partying. But was that really the case? Let's, let's, let's look here a little bit at, at some of this. Because to me, this is really a story about a father and about two sons. One that was a little bit lost within and one that was lost that was without. And so we want to kind of get the whole picture here of, and, and, and embrace it of being what, what does real freedom look like and how do we... How do we begin to put our lives in a place to where we can really be free and live out freedom. And so here we see that there's these two sons, and I won't read it all because it's a lengthy passage. It really starts in verse 11 and goes to verse 32, and so we're, we're not going to go into the whole thing, but we know that, that uh, early on here in, in, um, in verse 12 it says, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So in other words, it, and here's, here's, here's what we've got to get past. So many times as we read the Bible, we think in terms through this lens of Western culture. We, we, don't, we don't really always go back and think in terms of a Jewish culture and what, is that, what, what did that really look like in Jewish culture, which really this was, this was big, big. This was a no-no. A major no-no. Um, and so when he goes to his father, he's like, hey, I, I, I want my portion. I, I'm, I'm ready now. In, in Jewish history, you know, when you, when you or in, in, in their custom, when you look at it, and I've been to Israel multiple times, and I love in, in taking people on, on those tours, and, and one of the things that always is a real mark is when we hit Jerusalem, I always like to plan that out. And on Wednesday mornings, going to the Western Wall and uh, where, where they're praying, and they have bar mitzvahs. And those bar mitzvahs of the celebration of those 13-year-olds as they're, as they're being uh, ushered in, some of them on all kinds of, of platforms that they are raising over their heads, some of them on, on their dad's shoulders, and, and, and it is filled with dancing and celebration and music. And, and I mean, it's radical. It is wild. And they, are, they, are, they, they line up, you know, it's, it's like a parade, and they line up this big procession of all these different individuals, young men that are, that are celebrating their bar mitzvah. And, and when they start, and they begin to come down, and they're coming down through there. And as they come in, I mean, it is a radical time of just, I mean, they're just dancing and shouting and playing drums. If they don't have musicians as a part of their family, they, they actually pay professionals to, to do the music. 
and they're blowing the shofar and they're going and they come all the way down and they get down there and they, they go to their rabbi and the rabbi begins to take them through a ceremony. And that's a major milestone. But there's other milestones. And one of those others, we see it even in the life of Jesus. At about 30, they were able to now be qualified to take over their father's business. I'm not sure how young or old this younger was, but the feeling is that he probably wasn't ready yet. He thinks he's ready, but he's probably not ready yet. But he goes and he says, I want mine now. And notice what he says. So he divided to them. Oh, we need to catch that. He didn't just give to this younger. He, all, he gave to both of them. So he's setting them both up. He wasn't going to treat one and not treat the other. So he sets them both up. And then it was not many days after the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country. And there it says, wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Wasted his possessions with prodigal living. How did he waste it? Now, again, most of us, we want to immediately go, he's down there partying like an animal. He's with prostitutes. Why? Because the elder brother later accuses him that he was spending all his money on prostitutes, right? Come on. But remember, this elder brother is also the elder brother that said, Father, I've never transgressed you one time. Come on, how many parents go, yeah, right? <laughs> huh? Come on, let's, let's get some backstory. Let's, get, let's dig a little deeper here. Sometimes we, we read it sometimes and we don't see as we should see. And here, because here this older son, this, his elder brother, I mean, he's got, a, he's got a, obviously a real pharisaical judgmental thing on him. So I don't know that we should believe him, right? Not fully. But it does say that he wasted it. Now, some of us look at it and we're going, yeah, but there's this prodigal living. Well, this, what does that prodigal living mean? Does it mean just down there as a life of sin? No, he may have been down there doing business and lost it all because there was a famine in the land. See, I'm, we're, we're just close enough, probably Abilene as well, San Angelo. We're right on the edge, you know, with all that oil field and all that stuff. And I, believe me, I, I know so many, <laughs> and I've even been touched by it a little. You make some investments and you do some things, and all of a sudden, the oil boom turns into a bust. And it's like, oh, man, a famine in the land. <laughs> And now this lack hits, and he finds himself. So what does this word prodigal living mean? Because I, I want to bring it down. What if, what if this wasn't just this outlandish, crazy, partying lifestyle? What if this morning this word possibly could speak to every single one of us? I believe it does. So I did a little bit of deeper dive on this word, prodigal, living, prodigal. What is this? It, it really blew me away as I began to dive deeper into it and, it and I began to trace down to the root meaning of what that word was. Are you ready for it? Come on, I, I got to bait you a little bit. Do you really want to know this? You want to know what it really means? Because see, sometimes in, in this Western church and Western culture, Western mindset, we just want to we just want write them off. You know, they're just this crazy sinner. They're bar hopping. They're, you know, and we're like, I never did that. See, some of us can't say that. <laughs> but see, if we're not careful, we're just we're we're just ready to go. Yeah, thank God, I'm not like that. Yeah, lousy prodigal, spend all his daddy's money on prostitutes. I've never done that. But what if prodigal meant something different? 
as I begin to drill down, begin to go into it, and begin to study the backstory, because so many of these words have, have actual meaning to them. They were used, some of them, for very specific reasons in how they were used in context. What if, what if this prodigal living wasn't just a lifestyle of sin, but it had a different type of meaning to it? Are you sure you want to know? <laughs> I'm trying to get a, I want you to just be ready. Here's what it means. In the, in the Greek, in Roman culture, this was typically used. It was a, it was a military word, in the root of it was. And it, as it tracked through, it was used in different ways. But the military word was... It was used among the soldiers when they were, there was a derelict of duty. They didn't show up for work. You have a responsibility and you've neglected it. You've stepped out of order, you're out of line, you're not in sync. You're not in rhythm. You're not in cadence. Come on, you got, you got Dias Air Force Base here in St. Angelo. We have a lot of Goodfellow Air Force Base folks in the church, and I've, I've been on Goodfellow plenty of times and done different ceremonies and different stuff out there. And, and you know, it's on base, and, and my wife's dad, you know, he was 30 years Air Force. And when you're walking with someone on, on the military base, they make sure that they are walking in step with you. I used to jack with them. And then they'd have to get back. They know. You stay in step. This, it's just part of the order. It's part of what they do. They have an understanding of their certain responsibilities that I'm telling you, 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 you drive, you, you, you know, if you were coming off the base and it was the end of day and, um, oh, man, I just forgot that, that, you know, they start playing the trumpet and the, I mean, everybody's getting out of their vehicles, saluting towards the flags, right? There, there's, there's just something that's known in the military. And it was a word that was used among soldiers that you need to stay in the right order. You need to be here in your position. You need to show up on time. You need to do this. Prodigal living, this in, in Jewish culture, the family unit is so strong. And the way that worked, it was as if when this young man took those goods See, the father was willing to give it to his son. It's like, all right, buddy, let's see what you can do with it. But he didn't stay there. He took his goods. He stopped. He broke out of being part of the family unit. And he leaves and goes to a far country. i got to be my own man. And he pulls away and he leaves the father and the older brother to try and continue to make all of that work to take care of the family, to take care of legacy, to take care of the future, to take care of what needed to be taken care of in the moment. And he left as a prodigal, a derelict of duty, and he stopped showing up. He stopped being a part. How many of us at some point in time that we've gotten frustrated, we've, 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 we can call it church hurt, but come on, it's not church hurt, it's people hurt. If you show up on a job, you can get hurt. If you go to school, <laughs> come on, I'm around kids, it's like, man, you can say some mean stuff. <laughs> right? to, to my teachers, I mean, those kids, they, they're just going to be real, right? Right? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. And they'll, they'll, just, they'll just say. And you can get hurt. You can be impacted. Man, I feel like I... So how did this son, what happened? And I've got just very few minutes to knock this out, and you are going to have to really hang on for the ride because I'm going to hit these real fast. The first thing that happened, for, because I'm talking about being set free, what if we've not shown up? What if we've not stayed apart? What if somehow we've, we've just thought, you know, I, I just don't want to do this. See, I've had plenty of times where God says, Walt, here's what I want you to be a part of. Here's your assignment. And I'm like, but God, can't you see? I want to do this. And I'll try and sanctify this, make it holy, and I'll offer it to God. Come on, don't look at me all religious like you do. <laughs> but, I mean, because, again, what if God says, nursery? Some of you are going, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> that had to be of the devil. <laughs> what if he says, I, I've called you to be a part of the spiritual family here? Had one of my dearest friends, he's passed away now. Man, 30 years ago, nearly, he, he, uh, I've been senior pastor at the church there in San Angelo, 27 years this year. And, um, and when, when Ron showed up, I thought, yes. I mean, Ron, he was a big man, Mr. Care. He was administrator at Lakeview High School, and he brought his own sound system with him. You know what that is? <laughs> I mean, when he said amen, it rumbled through the sanctuary. And Ron didn't look like me. And in San Angelo, African-American population, our demographic's real small, very small percentage. And he's, he's originally from Pittsburgh. So he had a real kind of edge about him. And God had spoken to him and said, you're supposed to go over and you're supposed to be a part of the church. Submit yourself to Pastor Walt. And he didn't like it. But you know what? He obeyed God. And it was the most beautiful relationship. And for us to do community and do life together and just, he, he became an elder in the church and just, man, incredible. Sometimes there are things that God calls us to do. It's not easy. It's not in our want to. This son had to learn it the hard way. So he's off in prodigal living, and the first thing that happened is he came to his senses. You know, every single one of us need to be self-aware. And we need to check ourselves. And sometimes we got to off ourselves, and we just got to say, God, is there areas... Is there anything? Maybe I'm AWOL in an area. Are you present in your marriage? Are you present with your children? Are you showing up to work the way you need to? Oh, I know some of you went, no, I, you went to meddle in there, Pastor. Is it, come on, God wants us to represent properly in our walk with Him. Are we self-aware? Are we there? Are we have, Because if you check that, then God's able to help us with the second thing that happened is then he repented. And when we think about repentance, sometimes we're always thinking about, well, yeah, repent, turn or burn. You got to get away from that stuff. But I, I love the way the apostle Paul wrote in one of his letters there that, that they turned to God from idols. I believe that repentance happened in the prodigal when he went, man, I can be a servant in my father's house and be treated better than out here slopping these pigs. 
and he turned to the father's house. He turned to his father. And so you got to be willing to turn. You got to be willing, whatever that is, is it 10 degrees off or is it 180? Whatever that is, turning to, turning to Father God. And as he turned to his father, there were some things that he still had to move through. And every single one of us are going to have to move through those things because it's an age-old tactic. It's not, it's, it hasn't changed. It was there at the beginning of time. They are lies of Satan. And we have to renounce the lies that the enemy wants to tell us. The enemy's always going to be working. And it's, that's why I appreciate the, you know, so many of the books that are out here. And one of them being The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Because I'm telling you, there's a battleground. The enemy wants to find ways to boom, hit, your, hit your mind. Get you to believe something different than what the Word of God says. Than what God has spoke. Than what God has created and designed for you to be. Because if you start believing that lie and you start going down this track and, and you get off, it may not look real big right now, but as you travel through life, you don't realize where that path can lead. To stay on the path of God, to stay on, on that and, and know that you can trust Him and that He's, you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. You have been created in His image and His likeness. He has so many things for you, but you've got to embrace that. Somehow, the lie that came to this prodigal, that somehow he could go off and somehow maybe do better than his father, somehow just get out, get away from him. Get, out, get over here and you can do your own thing. When right there, staying in the house, staying in the family, staying as a part of what, what legacy would be, what true heritage was in the family and for each one of us in the family of God. See, because it was the very thing that how sin came into the world when he lied to Adam and Eve and he was like, hath God said, right? You know, if you really take in need of this fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil see God's been holding out on you he knows that you'll be like him it's the same lie it's the same lie and he wants to deceive us and you've got to somehow say you know what devil you're a liar I'm not going that path I'm not doing that I'm not buying into that. And you've got to cast down vain imaginations. You've got to take authority over those thoughts. And you've got to exercise your faith in that. And you've got to be able to, there, there's got to be some action to it. You can't not do something. Temptation's going to come. What are you doing about it? I, man, I talk to people about it. Why? Because I want to make myself accountable. Transparency. There are things there. And so in that, I just, I just have, have ordered my life in certain ways. I've got boundaries. I've got things. And, and, uh, um, and I, I don't have time to go into all that. But listen, all of us need good. One of the greatest ways to do spiritual warfare is to have the right kind of boundaries in your life. And accountability in your life. But the last thing that, that actually happened, and again, I could do a part two on here, but I'll, I'll try and wrap it up real quick. You can study it out. You can go from here. Is the last part of that is you have to receive God's gifts, and His greatest gift is His love. That Father was waiting for Him. Looking. And when he saw that son, it says afar off, somehow he recognized him. He saw him afar off, and it says he ran to him. He didn't wait for him to show up and go, You filthy sinner, you smell like a pig, boy. <laughs> Where you been? 
No. It says that he ran out and embraced him. He loved him. Kissed him. And it says then he called and he asked for the robe of the robe to be put on him, which I think typology, I think that we can see that as a robe of righteousness. Because the Bible speaks of that, that we have now been clothed with this robe of righteousness because we can't do this on our own. We need his robe of righteousness. We need to know that it's under the blood, that the blood of Jesus is sufficient. We need to know that, that like he did there, not only the robe of righteousness, but he put a ring on his finger. It, it was a signet ring that, that declared, you have authority now, and you can do this. You can walk with your head up, not down. There's freedom from shame. You're brought back into the family. That family ring was how he was able to even buy and sell and do business and, and, and represent the family. And immediately he's got his ring back. See, the enemy wants to keep you, even if you're forgiven, he wants to keep you in shame. Well, you blew it. You had your chance. Oh, no, 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 no. Father God has been waiting. Bring it back. Put that ring on your finger. Give you the authority that's needed to be able to live this life out in victory, to represent him in the earth, to advance the kingdom of God. And it says that he put, he put sandals on his feet. Obviously, he had been out there long enough. Who knows what he left with, how much goods and wealth and what he had, but coming back, obviously had nothing just like the enemy he'll try and take everything from you you got to know that that's a that's a plan of the enemy to live a life that is well pleasing to God puts you on the path of blessing and it says that he put those sandals on his feet think about that if you're without especially in West Texas I don't know about you but you know I you know in in different areas around in the yards and stuff, how many, how many ever experienced a goat head? <sighs> yeah, no, we wear shoes out here, right? <laughs> See, I, I've, been to, I've been to New Zealand. That, that, it's like lush green pastures. They have nothing to stick you, bite you, kill you. Now, you got a mean sand fly that that sucker will try and eat you alive, but, you know, they don't talk about sand flies. <laughs> but you could literally run out there barefoot across the, across the pasture. You know, he had these stickers. We had some over as a guest one time, and the little boy ran out in the backyard before I could say, Don't! He was already in the sticker patch. He's over there screaming. He didn't know what they were. He'd never seen a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> come on think about it and the Bible talks so much about our walk and what that walk would look like to be able to walk in love to be able to walk in wisdom to be able to walk in freedom come on there is a walk that God wants us to have because he's put sandals on our feet and we don't have to feel the harm of the world anymore and you don't have to have your feet bruised and battered and and hurt, and you can walk in victory over those things. There's a place that God has for us. Let's stand to our feet, and you know, we're gonna worship God. And I know that uh, probably Miss Amber is gonna come and close us out, but I just want us to offer ourselves to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness, thank you for our time together, thank you for just your anointing, your blessing, and for having your way right here in our lives. And whether we need Jesus for the very first time, whether maybe there's rededication, whether there is a need for us to say yes to you in a, in a, in a new way, God, I thank you that each one of us, whatever that is that you're stirring and dealing with us on, that we're saying yes to you. In Jesus' name, let's worship God and offer ourselves to him.